Hey, hi everyone. Welcome back to my live. This is my second live. And I think I'm going to go ahead and be doing lives almost every Monday just to talk about some thoughts that I have as a massage therapist and also answer more questions because I've been getting some questions on my comments. However, I haven't had time to answer all of them. So I thought that this would be a pretty good place to answer questions about this career or what school is like, etc. Whatever you have, I'll go ahead and answer over here. And before we get started, um, my name is Jackie. I am a certified therapist in California and I've been massaging for two years and I make videos on massage therapy, what the day-to-day -day life is like, and pretty much what the lifestyle is of a massage therapist because I couldn't find too many answers or too many videos on YouTube. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Today I'm going to talk about what the hardest part of being a massage therapist is for me and also um, I'm going to answer of course some questions that you guys have. So let's go and talk about the hardest part and again you know this is just my experience. There are many people that have different experiences and um, you know they may think that other aspects of being a massage therapist is harder. But for me, it is um, dealing with clients who have very tense muscles. And, you know, this is not just because you're very active. You know, it could be because you're active. But I've noticed that people who are very tense seem to have a lot of stress or a lot of blockage in their body. And it's just those types of clients who it's like, it's just so hard to do body work on them. It's hard to go into their muscles. And it's not because you know, you're not a good massage therapist, but I think it's just because of their body. It may be because um, they may not have a lot of massage therapy work done. Maybe they don't stretch a lot or they just may not feel comfortable yet receiving body work or receiving touch. So I thought about this one day because I had a few clients already who, you know, it's just so difficult to really work into their muscles. Even if you apply deeper pressure, it's just, okay, hold on, someone says here, thank you for your content. I appreciate your work. I appreciate you too, welcome. Um, and yeah, so I'm just talking about what the hardest part is of being a massage therapist for me. And um, it's clients with super tense muscles and like no matter how much work you do on them, you just can't seem to get through their muscles. And you know, it's not their fault at all. You know, a lot of people deal with so many um, physical, emotional, mental issues and problems that could manifest in their body as well. And so for this, um, for people that, for people with tense muscles, I would recommend not to do deep tissue work on them just yet because the more pressure you put on someone with with a tense and um, dense muscles, you won't be able to go into their body at all. So you have to do very light work. You need to also do a lot of breathing work as well. And for them, you know, like no matter how much work you do, it just may feel like they can't relax. So that's why it's so important to do uh, lighter work and to really work with their body. And you have to do what's best for your client. So, yeah, so the last thing you want to do is force your muscles into their muscles or force the pressure into their muscles. And for me, what I like to do with clients who are extremely tense is you know go into their muscles and once you feel a resistance just stop there and then hold that for as long as the as long as you can until the muscles soften and once the muscles so sorry guys and once the muscles soften you can go in a little bit deeper and you know it takes a lot more time um it takes a lot more time to really get into the muscles of someone who has tense muscles and someone who doesn't feel super relaxed. Also guys, sorry, this is my second live. I don't usually do these. So I'm just working on my speaking and my public speaking skills because, you know, it's live and I can't edit this. So sorry about that. Um, 
And then also, of course, you're going to get clients with all different kinds of bodies. So as a massage therapist, you never know what you'll get. So that's why I recommend living a healthy lifestyle according to you. So that can mean exercise in whatever way works best. For me, I work out at least three to six times a week. So that'll help me, you know, gain stamina for those clients who do have larger muscles and do have more dense muscles. And also that you have to work with people's different energies as well. So, um, you know, making sure that you do a lot of self care and also not taking their energy with you because sometimes people may overthink how a client might act towards you or maybe you didn't think that they liked your work very much and then you can sit with those thoughts all day. So just make sure to like shake those thoughts away at the end because it's not your responsibility for how they feel, you know, for how they feel emotionally. Um, so all you can really do is take care of yourself emotionally and physically. When dealing with clients who have heavy energy or have really like tense and stressful muscles. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and go into the questions. So if you have any questions, um, comment down below or I guess in the chat and then I'll answer them. But I have a few questions because I posted something yesterday about this live. So now I'm gonna go ahead and answer those. So this first question is from N Girl and um, it is, let me go ahead and go there. Let's see. Okay, so do you stay in touch with other massage therapists you went to school with? So yes, I do stay in touch with some massage therapists. Um, and we still text, we have a group chat. So whenever we have specific updates, we always chat with each other and text each other. And one of my classmates, she actually passed the Mblex. So she texted us, she was like, yay, I passed. So we all still keep in touch. However, you know, with most things we go on with our lives and we continue working and whatever, but I really enjoyed my experience in massage school and all my classmates. So, you know, every once in a while we try to like text each other or even I have a classmate, she has her own studio in San Francisco. So I do want to visit her studio soon and book an appointment. Okay, and also, do you network with other massage therapists in your area? So, as of right now, I don't do a lot of networking. I mean, mostly it's just the massage therapist that I meet at my job. And um, according, not according, but with the massage therapists that I work with, we do a lot of trades, we massage each other, we teach each other different techniques. And so, you know, I know about, I guess, 10 massage therapists in the area from my current job and then my, my other previous job where I used to work. And then you can also like uh, join like Facebook groups. I know that they have a lot of like massage Facebook groups where you can learn about different experiences and people ask for advice and tips. So that's a good place to go to if you have Facebook. And maybe Instagram, they have like different massage groups. I'm not sure about Instagram, but Facebook is really good when it comes to like having a community and creating groups all right so okay and then she also asks i believe you said you do some mobile massages what has that experience been like so it's definitely a learning experience um doing mobile massage because um it's not my favorite type of business plan honestly i mean i have a few clients they're mostly friends and I have like a couple of people who are from referrals or whatever. Um, I do enjoy meeting different people. However, I think the main, uh, not issue, but the thing that is pretty difficult for me is just carrying my massage, ta my massage table wherever I go. Especially because I live in the area of California where there's a lot of hills and people have a lot of stairs in their home, especially going up to the houses. So I think that's the most difficult part is just carrying all my supplies into their house, carrying the table, all of that. But other than that, I enjoy the experience of a mobile massage because you get to do it in their home, especially now because it is 
you know, I mean, we're still kind of in the pandemic and a lot of people don't like going out. So I feel pretty safe going to people's homes and massaging them. And, um, and yeah, it's really, you know, I think it's a lot more popular these days to do mobile massage. All right. And then also, I think that it's also a good experience, like a business experience for you, because you'll learn about creating your own services and what to buy for your business, like, you know, the oils, the lotions, the sheets, um, and the bolsters, just different supplies that you need. So I think it's a good like first stepping stone of business skills. I like your little emojis. <laughs> That's cute. Um, so yeah, having a mobile massage business, I think it's a good first step into learning about having your own massage business because again, it's the supplies. It's also creating boundaries and what is and isn't appropriate with your clients. Um, and then also like having to tell your clients if you are going to increase your prices. So, you know, again, it's working with different types of personalities, different kind of people. So it's a good experience, but I think the only thing, again, is carrying that table and carrying your supplies everywhere. So in my opinion, I would rather have my own space to massage rather than going to people's homes. All right. Okay. So the next question, let's see. Okay. Can you talk? So M's. M's5543 says, can you talk about how your body has changed since you worked or started massage school? Okay, so my body has changed, I think, significantly. So, well, when I first started, um, when I first started in this career, so like my first couple of months as a massage therapist, your body is changing and a lot more muscles are growing in. So I had a lot of like pain in my arms, to be honest with you, especially my forearms, my hands. And you know, it's all just about taking care of yourself and doing a lot of hand stretches, forearm stretches, um, getting enough sleep, drinking enough water, exercising. So I had some mostly arm pain and then some back pain. And now it's fine, like I don't, really feel too much arm pain anymore and I do feel some back pain just because I have scoliosis and again that's why body mechanics is super important because you don't want to hunch over lean too forward you want to keep your face and neck straight when you're massaging so so that's why you have to be so intentional and you have to be aware of how you're standing, how you're massaging, what your technique is, so that you're not putting too much pressure and putting too much, um, I guess, internal strength into your massages. And you use, use more of your body weight instead of like your actual like body strength. So <clears throat> I, to be honest, I did, I think I look a lot healthier now ever since starting massage therapy. And... It doesn't matter what weight you are. However, I I gained more muscle, and I I did lean out a bit. I did lean out a bit because of all the exercise exercise that I've been doing for massage. Okay, and then what kind of massages do you often do? So mostly for me, I work at a spa, and I mostly do Swedish and deep tissue. And my favorite, I would say. Lately, actually, it has been deep tissue just because I like to do a lot of trigger point therapy and finding those trigger points and then like melting those knots away have been pretty interesting for me and learning new techniques. Okay, so what are the best, so Leanne Triando says, what are the best ways to build fitness, strength, and endurance to massage multiple clients a day, around 45 clients. So again, this is why um, it's so important to exercise as a massage therapist and not many, I mean, I'm not sure if all people exercise, but just for me, I need that extra like motivation and strength. So that is why um, every Monday I do cardio um, plus abs and then Wednesdays I do strength training so like weights or using my own body as weights 
and then on Friday I do, what do I do on Friday? I do this thing called animal flow, so it's kind of like body strength again, because I think body strength is super important in massage therapy, especially like planks, doing a lot of planks, building those arm muscles. And um, and then after that, I also go to the gym as well in the evening sometimes, just to do some cardio and then I go to the sauna as well. So this works for me just because um, I have the schedule to do that, but it really just depends, you know, whatever works best for you. If you guys like dancing, going on walks, um, especially if you're new to exercise, just do whatever you really enjoy because I think that exercise is so important and if you enjoy it, it's even better. So that's how I gain strength to do four to five. That is my maximum is five clients. Sometimes I'll do six, but my, my body tells me that five is like what I can do. Sometimes with six, I do get tired. So that's why you have to know your body and if if your company is booking you with way too many clients, you have to tell your manager or whoever does the booking that you cannot do more than five because your body will get tired, you'll burn out faster, and then you cannot perform your best. So that's why it's so important to know your body and to take care of yourself. Let's see. Okay, I think... Oh yeah, okay, let me, I think we have a couple more. So this, um, this one says, I'm in my 40s and I have some back pain most days. I'm not sure if doing massage therapy is a good career fit for me. Any thoughts or advice? So, so I would say, like, I would ask yourself, how often do you have work done on yourself? So how, how often do you get massages? and um you know take salt baths or let's see what other things can you do you know do self massage so taking care of yourself is super super important so how often are you doing that so ask yourself that um and then also also examine how you are doing your body work or like what's your body mechanics like so if you are hunched over all the time and if you're um, looking like down and your neck is looking down straight and kind of straining those areas, how is that for you? And also, how many hours do you work per week? So are you working a lot of hours? So maybe you're tired because you're working way too much. So really examine those things because sometimes if you're working too much, you're going to get tired very easily especially when you're in your 40s. I have co co-workers who are in their 60s and 70s, but they work like maybe three times a week. So it's not too much. And then of course they have their own side businesses. However, like when you get older, you'll probably discover what your favorite niche is in massage therapy. So if you're in, you know, if you do like orthobionomy or if you're doing more lymphatic massage, what you can do is charge a higher price and work less hours. So that's what I want to do when I'm older. But, you know, so find your niche, find your niche, charge higher, work less hours, and then also work on your body mechanics, take good care of yourself, and hopefully that can help you uh, work as a massage therapist longer. All right. And I think that's it for now. If you guys have any more questions, you can comment over here. Or if not, just um, leave more comments on this video and then I'll go ahead and answer them. Or also I'll answer them on next week's live as well. And if you have any more topics, um, just go ahead and let me know. I can talk about it here. And yeah, I love you guys a lot. So thank you so much for um, following this channel. And, you know, I'm going to be posting more about the lifestyle of a massage therapist and of course you know like no job is perfect you know there it's pros and cons i'll actually be posting a video on that this week it's an updated pros and cons video of being a massage therapist but i love it and i cannot wait to share more of my experience with you guys all right so i'll talk to you guys next week bye